A mother faces court accused of murdering her two young sons in their Blue Mountains home. A new system of aged care will explain the plan to keep people in their own homes longer. Pop star Justin Timberlake faces the music why he had to make a big announcement after his guilty plea. A superstar welcome for former Chelsea and Manchester United footballer Juan Mata, one of the biggest signings ever for the A-League. And from Brisbane to Melbourne, Aussie crowds enjoy their chance to thank our heroes from Paris. This is 10 News First with Chris Barr. A mother has faced court for the first time after being charged with the murders of her two young sons, aged 9 and 11. The boys were found dead in their Blue Mountains home on Tuesday by their father. Her left arm heavily bandaged and wearing a hospital gown, Trish Smith kept her head down in court, her first appearance since she was charged with murdering her two sons, Russell and Benjamin. There's a lot of family members who are really hurting in respect to this, parents, grandparents and the like. The bodies of 11-year-old Russell and 9-year-old Benjamin were found by their father on Tuesday, but court documents have revealed police believe the boys may have died up to seven 17 hours earlier. Smith has been charged with killing her sons sometime between 7.30 p.m. on Monday night and 12.30 p.m. the next day, before allegedly attempting to take her own life. Now out of hospital and in custody, the magistrate today asked whether she understood what was happening. Yes, Smith responded. At this stage, I can't say anything more in relation to um, what's going to happen with the matter uh, until we get all the material. Today is just the start of what will likely be a lengthy legal process. Smith won't be back in court now until November as investigators continue to try and piece together the final moments leading up to the little boy's deaths. Child death investigations are always very complex and they're also high profile and very sensitive in nature. So the police will have to tread very carefully in how they treat this situation. The immense pain was felt even more strongly by family and friends last night as the brothers missed watching their beloved Penrith Panthers win. In a statement, the family said, rest in peace, beautiful boys. We love you and loved the incredible spirit you brought to each game that will live in our hearts forever. Samara Gardner for 10 News First. Putin will not prevail. That's the message from a meeting between US President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer, where the war in Ukraine was top of the agenda. There's still no easing of weapons restrictions for Ukraine, despite increasingly desperate pleas from Vladimir Zelensky. A recently elected Prime Minister and an outgoing President united against a shared threat. What do you think of Vladimir Putin's threat of war, Mr President? I don't think much about Vladimir Putin. Ukraine's push to ease restrictions on weapons supplied by the UK and US was a key part of discussions. Kyiv wants to strike deep into Russian territory using British-made Storm Shadow missiles, which have American parts. There are some signs the White House is willing to change its policy, but not yet. We've come to a strong position. I'm very pleased that we have this discussion. Like Vladimir Putin is already sabre-rattling, warning against the move with Russia's ambassador to the UN, telling the Security Council... ..if the decision to lift restrictions is really taken or will be taken, NATO countries are starting direct war with Russia. It is a delicate balancing act for allies, but Ukraine insists it cannot wait any longer. The country is reeling from a string of deadly strikes while it tries to maintain a daring ground offensive on Russian soil. Putin and his accomplices must feel all the problems that war brings, Zelensky says. The war must become harder for Russia. While Keir Starmer was in Washington, one of his predecessors was in Kyiv. Boris Johnson was there to show his support and reinforce the message, Ukraine will not fight this war alone. John Paul Gonzo for 10 News First. 
Pop star Justin Timberlake has issued a grovelling apology after pleading guilty to drink driving but avoiding a criminal conviction. The 43-year-old admits he made a huge mistake and could have made a different decision. Mobbed by media and members of the public, this is the norm for singer-songwriter Justin Timberlake. But the 43-year-old pop star has been in the spotlight for the wrong reasons after pleading guilty to impaired driving. I try to hold myself to a very high standard for myself and this was not not that. Arrested in New York's Hamptons in June, Timberlake was originally charged with drink driving but denied the accusation. Police claiming he ran a stop sign, veered out of his lane and exited his BMW smelling of alcohol before refusing to take a breath test. Even if you've had one drink, don't get behind the wheel of a car. There's so many alternatives. Escaping a criminal conviction, the star's charge was downgraded to a traffic violation. See, the evidence revealed that my client finished the contents of one drink in two hours at the American Hotel. This public safety presser outside the Sag Harbour Police Department, a requirement in his plea deal. But I'm hoping that whoever's watching and listening right now can learn from this mistake. I know that I certainly have. Timberlake, who's currently on tour, will now say bye-bye-bye to his driver's licence for three months. The singer with a net worth of more than $200 million will also have to pay a $500 fine and serve 25 hours of community service. Brianna Boylan for 10 News First. The violent protests that ground Melbourne city streets to a halt for days during the controversial Land Forces Weapons Expo could be set to return. The government's indicated it will bid to host the event again, even though nearby small businesses say the hit to their bottom lines was huge. Day after day, protesters turned up. You are an absolute murderer! Clashing with police in ugly displays outside Melbourne's Convention and Exhibition Centre. 24 officers were injured, pelted with rocks, bottles and horse manure. Officers fought back against the anti-war protesters, deploying capsicum spray, flash distraction devices and non-lethal munitions. The cost of Victoria Police's largest operation in decades blown out to $30 million. But the biannual event could soon be welcomed back to Victoria. The government estimates the Weapons Expo brought in $70 million into the local economy, but small businesses say they were hit hard during the three days of action. You hear on the news uh, pepper spray and rubber bullets being used. A lot of people are afraid of their safety. They just don't want to be in the area at all. So they don't come in, they don't even if they're local, they don't come out of that, their houses. Some business owners at the popular South Melbourne markets say foot traffic was down by around 70 per cent, questioning the choice to hold it in the city centre. Oh, that's what you should do, anime expo, movie expos, not weaponry expos, you know, like do it somewhere else. The disruptions hurting particularly hard during the cost of living crisis. Hopefully we'll make up for it next week, but who knows. <laughs> Caitlin Dugan for 10 News First. It was Democracy Sausage Day for New South Wales voters, with millions heading to polling booths around the state to cast their ballots in local council elections. It comes after weeks of chaos and controversy in the Liberal Party after a monumental stuff-up that saw 140 Liberal candidates miss out on nominations. Queenslanders have turned out to celebrate Australia's Olympians and Paralympians at a parade in their honour in Brisbane. Thousands cheered on the champions who were also awarded the keys to the city that will soon be hosting an Olympic Games of its own. It was a hero's homecoming. <laughs> and today, Brisbane turned it on. 
welcoming back our Aussie Olympic and Paralympic champions. I mean, look at this turnout. I mean, I love Brisbane. This is always what we do. We love supporting our local sports stars. I've played a lot of golf since I've been home, which has been good fun. I mean, playing golf on a Tuesday, I'm like, I feel like I'm retired. Parading past Brisbane's own Eiffel Tower and into the hearts of Queenslanders. It was kind of crazy seeing people that are, like, famous just, like, walk about in normal everyday life among normal people. With plenty of selfies, signatures... <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah. More signatures, the more money. Sorry. And the more money, the better. And the chance to see the medals up close. It was very heavy. It feels very cool. Pride for a country that achieved its best Olympics campaign. Thanks so much for coming out. What a wonderful day in Brisbane. Thank you. Awarded the keys to Brisbane. <laughs> a city that will soon bask in its own Olympic glory. Today's homecoming really signals the end of Paris 2024, with the attention now turning to Los Angeles, but more importantly, Brisbane 2032, with these athletes today hopefully inspiring the next generation of those bronze, silver and gold medalists. And to see so many kids there was just fantastic. It was awesome. I mean, I got this. I've, I've taught this girl three years in a row will be this year, and I just saw her in the crowd, and she's given me this, a photo of it every year prior to, and... I just love this stuff. This is what motivates me to keep on going. Who could be our next Olympic athletes? I'm probably going to do breakdancing and soccer. I would do fencing. Cricket. Cricket. Um, maybe 100 freestyle. As for our current swimming stars... This way, guys. There was little time to rest with more accolades at the Swimming Australia Awards across the Brisbane River. Oh, I've loved being home. I actually haven't been in my own bed too much. I've been here, there and everywhere. It's, you know, cool to look at my medals when I need to get them out for things, but I um, have been trying to disconnect as much as I can and just relax a little bit. And celebrate. Cheers to that. Matthew Carstunen for 10 News First. And the celebrations aren't over yet for Australia's athletes, with Melbourne throwing a happy homecoming this evening for its Olympic and Paralympic stars. Georgia Simpson is there. Georgia, the wet weather isn't putting a damper on the fun. Good evening, Chris. Well, in classic Melbourne fashion, it was the warmest of welcomes for our Olympians and Paralympians on a very, very quintessentially cold Melbourne day. We are in the heart of Melbourne's sporting precinct to welcome back our Olympians and Paralympians. There's plenty of people down here, uh, lots of excited little next generation athletes getting selfies with the Olympians and Paralympians. It was fantastic to see them all uh, be welcomed back to Melbourne. We were lucky enough to catch up with some of them, and this is what they had to say. It's so amazing here. The energy is electric. I'm just so happy to be here. Being away, we're in our own little bubble. We think, oh, this is really great. But until you kind of come out and, and really kind of see the general public and the impact it's had on them, that's when it feels quite real. It's so special. Um, the sun's come out right at this moment and to see so many little kids uh, wanting a signature and a hold of the medal is so rewarding. There were coloured cannons going off at the event, just like in Paris, but in the colours of green and gold for Australia. And the Premier and Lord Mayor of Melbourne were also presented with an Olympic and Paralympic flag signed by all the athletes. So it's certainly been a fantastic welcome home to all the athletes. Uh, and as you can see, the festivities are continuing behind us. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Georgia. Georgia Simpson joining us live there from Melbourne. Still to come, a 10 News First exclusive, the medical breakthrough for a condition that triggers heart attacks and strokes. 24 firefighters battle a fierce unit blaze that cost a quarter of a million dollars. And these boots were made for walking. How to buy yourself a piece of Taylor Swift or Michael Jackson or even Bruce Lee. Our celebrities are on the trip of a lifetime. It looks like it's from another world. Oh, this is magical. Seven o'clock Sunday, there's mud, sweat and tears. Maybe you keep your mouth shut. We're not on that. Yeah, if you ain't swimming right now either. And the drama <laughs> doesn't stop there. Never actually made a llama that I've liked. Llamas suck. <clears throat> oh, of course it's going to happen. We get the one broken llama. Celebrity Amazing Race. Seven o'clock Sunday on 10 and 10 Play. Now, I'd like you to take extra special care of Mum. Of course. Like my car, Tyron Auto. Get $100 off your next logbook service plus 17 cents per litre off shell fuel when you book online. Get the care you deserve at My Car, Tyron Auto. People first. That's the sound of you winning.
because you managed to get the kids and the frozen dinosaur nuggets, all without going to the supermarket. Smash it. Door dash it. Repco is bringing the bathers. With 50% off Penrod HPR5 5 litre, just 43 bucks. Plus save 30 bucks on our Repco battery trade-in. Catalogue out now. Repco, bring in the Bathurst. Start your morning with unforgettable taste. The perfect cup of coffee at the touch of a button with intense aromas and generous crema. No barista required. Nespresso, what else? Wayne here features actual intelligence, complete with the world's most powerful internal computer. And he shares his bets on Sportsbet's new feed, so you can copy real bets from real people with Sportsbet. You win some, you lose more. But what's the best value? Oh, excuse me. What about this? The Woolies app. You just press the best unit price button and... Oh, there you go. All sorted, showing the lowest unit price first. Impressive. Saw it on my socials. <laughs> <laughs> Easily compare unit prices in the Woolworths app. That's today's fresh food people. The Mazda M event is now on. Until September 15th, enjoy an M event bonus of between $500 and $1,500. Now is the perfect time to get into your new Mazda. Make the move today. Tuesday's the night for new Taskmaster. In this house, anything can happen. This is epic. Is Reese Nicholson up to the task? I love you. I'm having a full blown mental breakdown. Too. New Taskmaster is coming to Tuesdays. Police have charged a man over a stabbing into Woomba, west of Brisbane. Emergency services were called to a property in Bonjean last night where they found the 28-year-old man. He was flown to the PA hospital in Brisbane with non-life-threatening injuries. A 27-year-old man known to the victim was taken into custody and charged with wounding. He faced the Toowoomba Magistrates Court earlier today. A 19- and 20-year-old have been arrested following a fire at a Donvale school overnight. Police will allege the two young men set fire to a shed on school property and vandalised two parked cars. They were arrested at the scene and released pending summons. It's been a tough run for the Heatherwood Special School. It was severely damaged in a blaze believed deliberately lit this time last year. An Adelaide unit has gone up in flames. 24 firefighters battling the blaze at the Novar Gardens complex just before 10.30 last night. They extinguished it within 20 minutes, but not before the fire caused a quarter of a million dollars damage. Police are investigating how it started. It's a disorder that can affect one in 20 women, triggering heart attacks and strokes. And there's no known cure for fibromuscular dysplasia, or FMD. But now a team of Australian and international researchers has made a breakthrough, figuring out what causes the potentially deadly disease. Hope is a funny thing. Yeah, sorry. At times, it overwhelms her. It was, and still is, it's a fight every day. But hope is also what drives Melanie. Just let the machine bring your right leg through. Every step is exactly right. The then 40-year-old was fit and healthy, so when she had her stroke, nothing made sense. It does now, though. It was caused by FMD, fibromuscular dysplasia. And it's a disorder of the vessel wall. It's predisposed to dissection or tearing. And if that happens, it can trigger not only strokes, but heart attacks, aneurysm and kidney failure. Believe it or not, one in 20 women have the blood vessel disorder. And that worries cardiologist Jason Kovacic. So he and his team of international researchers took skin samples from hundreds of patients. They then mapped the genetic profile of some of those cells called fibroblasts. What they found astounded them. They unlocked the cause of the disease. We've now identified this really important gene network that governs this disease. They discovered those genes changed the nature of collagen in the it's a very fine balance though and we now understand that when that balance is not right, 
you're predisposed to fibromuscular dysplasia. It's really exciting because until now we really didn't know very much about this disease. Currently there is no treatment for FMD and while more research does need to be done, this breakthrough does pave the way for first of its kind therapeutic targets which could make the world of difference for someone like Melanie. And it makes the fight well worth it. It's, it's, it's about giving hope to people. Amanda Hart for 10 News First. Want to walk in Taylor Swift's shoes? Well, this auction is giving you the chance to do just that. The pop star's boots and hats are on sale at a Hong Kong celebrity auction alongside countless other pieces of memorabilia. Bruce Lee's sunglasses are expected to fetch up to $100,000, while a jacket worn by Michael Jackson is expected to fetch up to double that. Online bidding is now open and closes with a live auction at the end of the month. And from Taylor Swift to Taylor Ryan, who joins me now with the latest on the weather. Tay Tay, feeling a little less like spring in parts of the southeast. I wish I could buy some Taylor Swift merch, Chris. Uh, yes, we have seen a burst of cold weather across the southeast, which has seen temperatures plummet. It's been affecting most of the area you can see under this band of cloud that's sitting mostly over Victoria and Tassie, parts of which actually woke up to some spring snow this morning. Now, you can see on the synoptic map, this is mostly due to this strong cold front drag dragging a polar air mass across the southeastern states, which has brought a wintry feel, particularly to parts of Victoria and southern New South Wales. And it is about to get even chillier. I'll have more details on that for you a little later in the bulletin. But adding to our cold snap, we have seen some shower activity today. That is set to continue tomorrow. But around the capitals today, we saw a nice sunny day in Brisbane where it reached 24. Sydney was also sunny, but there is a gusty change on the way. Melbourne had a chilly top of 11 degrees. Adelaide reached 16 and it was sunny in Perth, reaching a top of 26. Now, I'll be back just before 6 o'clock with a little more weather for you, including the chance of some more spring snow. So I'll see you very soon, Chris. Thanks, Taylor. Up next, Donald Trump stirs the pot again in the race to the White House as Pope Francis gives his voting advice to millions of American Catholics. Why more Aussies than ever are suffering from hay fever and what you can do about it. And we might have some of the most dangerous animals in the world, but America has bears and they're not afraid to hang in the birds. This week's going to be wild when special guest host Robert Irwin joins Ursula, Lloyd, Alex, Ed and Sam. Hang on, what? <laughs> That's insane. Hog wild. OK, I'm in. Have you been paying attention? Monday on 10 and 10 play. When the lucky country isn't so lucky, it's lucky you're with Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. Start your engines. Take your place. Radiator Springs. It's time to race. Get a bonus Disney Worlds of Wonder collector card pack at Woolworths when you purchase participating products from Energizer or Valeda in a $30 shop. Start collecting today. by Australia. Try Barocca Mind with Spanish Sage for enhanced memory and mental recall in just one hour. In time for your interview. New Barocca Mind. Master your mind. Oh, can I expense this? Zero. Beautiful business. When you unwrap an Uncle Toby's muesli bar, you're unwrapping a slice of pure... <laughs> ..with its explosion of Aussie oats and delicious choc chips. Unwrap the yeah.
NYC, Spidey's Town. Shooting webs upside down. Get a bonus Disney World of Wonder collector card pack at Woolworths when you purchase participating products from Gillette or Oral-B in a $30 shop. Start collecting today. With a one in four chance to win at the Monopoly game at Macca's, we cross now to the prize warehouse. Pam, what's up for grabs? Uh, well, Lisa, there's a 10 grand Amazon.com.au gift card. Oh, oh, <laughs> Bosch Ultimate Toolkits, TCL Home Appliance Packages, there's a year's worth of DoorDash, and of course, right, <laughs> ah, the Isuzu MUX SUV. How's the new supervisor? Oh, he's fun. Andy Allen and Sophia Levin! Master Chefs taking over Deal's primetime celebrity special. They've got the fame, but can they nab the fortune? 7.30 Tuesday on 10 and 10 Play. Most people would like to stay in their homes to see out their golden years. And in 10 years' time, it's expected 1.4 million elderly Australians will be accessing government help to do just that. The Albanese government's newly announced sweeping reforms to aged care include a new system of home care. Network political editor Ashley Raper joins me now with the details. Ash, how's it going to work? Part of the new age care reforms is keeping people at home for longer. And so there'll be a change from the current home care packages to a new supported home program coming into effect next year. Under the existing system, there are four levels and people are assessed at needing basic care, a level one, and high care at level four. And the figure attached is how much can be spent on help each year. The new system has eight levels. And while we don't have all the details, we know level one will have about $11,000 to spend on services and the highest care figure will be increased to $78,000. The aim of adding more levels is to make the home services more tailored and targeted to needs instead of having four big categories for people to slot into and navigate what's on offer. The specific services the new levels we don't know yet. What we do know is some people will pay more. Nobody pays anything for medical services, but for help class under independence, like showering and getting dressed, a full pensioner will be asked to pay 5% of the cost, and that goes up to 50% for self-funded retirees. There's a range, too, for the everyday living component, like cleaning and shopping, from a contribution of 17.5% to 80%. Two things to note, the total amount you'll pay once you enter the aged care system is capped at $130,000. And those already on a home care package won't be asked to pay more when they transition to support at home, Chris. Thanks, Ash. Ashley Raper, our network political editor, joining us there. Hay fever season has hit with new data showing the debilitating condition is on the increase. A quarter of the population now suffers each spring and experts warn that number will continue to rise because the hay fever season is getting longer. It's the spring condition that impacts one in four Australians. Hay fever season, or the grass pollen season, is a bit of the countryside visiting the city. An above average season is on the horizon fuelled by an increased rainfall that's predicted for eastern Australia. This will provide ideal growing conditions for grass pollen. Last year was uh, a slightly above average year and we're looking at something similar to that probably starting in the middle to late October and then peaking through November. The issue seems to be more with like subtropical and temperate grasses that have been introduced to Australia rather than native plants um, that cause these symptoms. Data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics shows 24% of Australians suffer from hay fever, up from just 15% in 2008. Experts put the rise down to increased migration, both domestically and internationally, as well as our changing climate. It does look like it is going to be probably an increasing problem for the future. Common symptoms include itchy eyes, frequent sneezing and coughing, as well as a runny nose. But there are lesser known impacts that can be debilitating. You know, it affects people's ability to concentrate, they experience brain fog, they don't sleep well. Continuous irritation and of course that's going to affect 
your mood, it's going to affect how you feel, how you work with things. To alleviate symptoms, the advice is to avoid going outside on high pollen days. Eye drops, antihistamines and steroids can provide relief for hay fever sufferers. If over-the-counter medication doesn't cut it, it's best to talk to your GP. Georgia Simpson for 10 News First. Former President Donald Trump has gone after Vice President Kamala Harris in her home state of California. Taking aim at Harris, Trump again labelled her a communist, saying California's been ruined due to her and other Democrat policies. Trump appealed for the traditionally blue state to vote for him, saying he's going to give Californians more water. So California, vote for Trump. And you're going to have water and you're going to have growth and you're going to have prosperity. And all those people that are leaving are going to really come back. The same tired playbook we've heard for years with no plan, no plan on how he would address the needs of the American people. Harris currently leads Trump in California with 59 per cent of the vote to his 35. Pope Francis has weighed in on the election, saying both candidates are against life. Speaking on board a plane, His Holiness proclaimed Catholics in the US have a difficult choice to make. He criticised former President Donald Trump for his migrant policy and Vice President Kamala Harris for her pro-abortion stance. You must vote and you must choose the lesser evil. Who is the lesser evil? That lady or that gentleman? I don't know. The Pope also denounced the killing of children by Israel in Gaza, saying neither side is taking enough steps to reach a peaceful solution. A new report into last year's Maui wildfires has slammed Hawaiian officials for not being prepared for the disaster that killed 102 residents. It found the devastation was years in the making and criticised officials for making no preparations for the fire despite days of warnings. The report has made sweeping recommendations to ensure it doesn't happen again. Six United Nations workers are dead following an Israeli airstrike on a school inside a refugee camp in Gaza. 18 people were killed in the attack. It's the highest number of UN staff deaths in a single incident. The UN condemned the attack, but the IDF says it was legitimate, accusing Hamas of using the school as a command centre. A camera has captured the dramatic moment a train ploughed into a truck carrying a US tank in South Carolina. The truck was attempting to cross the tracks when it got stuck, forcing the train to ram it. Incredibly, nobody was injured. If you go down to the beach today, you are sure of a big surprise because today's the day the black bears have their picnic. Beachgoers at South Lake Tahoe in California were shocked to see a furry friend there despite the area having one of the densest black bear populations in North America. It wasn't the only black bear sighting during the week with a bear and her cubs seen wandering the streets of New Jersey on the other side of the country. Sightings there are up 30% and authorities are warning people to steer clear of the animals. Still to come, the big change to Qantas flights, the bitter pill you'll be swallowing over meal changes and increased fees. And it's the stuff of nightmares how the astronauts stuck in space are coping. Seven o'clock Sunday, there's llama drama. Llama suck. <laughs> of course it's going to happen. We get the one broken llama. Celebrity Amazing Race. Seven o'clock Sunday on 10 and 10 Play. We love our holiday house and the extra income we get by sharing it as a holiday rental. Terry Shear provides cover for theft, damage by tenants and loss of rental income. Terry Shear Holiday Rental Landlord Insurance. We wouldn't rent our property without it. Holiday rental insurance for just $1.50 or less per day. Get a quote, call Terry Shear or go online. You Fancy face, culinary inspired. Cat adored. Every delicious detail, every delicate bite brings you and your cat closer together. Fancy Feast. Love is in the details. It's Teddy Hub. 
Price Price Madness with crazy deals. Like over 300 bucks off the Dyson V11. Segway 9 bottle electric scooter crunched 500 off. And get 20% off Sonus Home Audio. Send it cheaper, ask for a JB deal. JB, you've done it again. At Woolworths, enjoy great weekly specials this spring. Like Australian Fresh RSPCA approved chicken breast fillets bulk tray, now $9.50 a kilo, save $1.50 a kilo. That's today's fresh food people. There's a light, a same kind of light that always shines on me. There's a way everybody says <laughs> to do each and every little thing. Mozzarella sticks. Pickers, let's get silly. There is more support for Australians. Households will get a $300 electricity bill credit and eligible small businesses a $325 credit. Visit supportingaustralians.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Zoom, zoom. Think of everything you could do with NIB. You could use NIB Rewards to get a discount on some new sneakers. You could get into running. With the time you save with telehealth and prescription delivery, you could really get into running. You could find the perfect physio and really, really get into running. You could even get discounted travel insurance. Let's just start with the sneakers. NIB, potentially amazing. is back. I am the Taskmaster. Coming to Tuesdays on Tenants and Play. Changes in the air for Qantas and customers are not happy, Jan. The airline will not only be increasing its fees to change bookings by 20% from $99 to $119, it'll also be overhauling its specially ordered meal service. From October, passengers ordering meals with religious dietary requirements won't be nut-free, gluten-free meals will not be dairy-free and vice versa. The national carrier says changes to its meal service are to align with broader airline standards. Their mission should have lasted eight days, but astronauts Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore won't be returning to Earth until February next year. Three months into their long wait in space, the pair remains in good spirits, talking to reporters after seeing their troubled Boeing Starliner return safely without them. In a place far, far away... The chords of the violin are being played to the tune of Star Wars The Force Awakens on board the Dragon SpaceX craft. But elsewhere across the galaxy, those pitch-perfect sounds have fallen flat. Three months on, stranded astronauts Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore are optimistic with their return to Earth in the year of 2025. We're excited to fly in two different spacecraft. I mean, we're testers. That's what we do. You know, we look at different aircraft, spacecraft, whatever, evaluate it, um, and that's a pretty unique opportunity. NASA has confirmed the pair will be brought back home using SpaceX's Dragon capsule. While they're disappointed their troubled Boeing Starliner returned safely without them... Touchdown. Starliner is back on Earth. They can now focus on exploring their new spacecraft. You certainly, as uh, the commander and the PLT of your spacecraft, you don't want to see it go off without you. And even though it did, the Star Troopers might have to get used to each other a little while longer. 
It's been quite an evolution over the last three months. Uh, we've uh, been involved from the beginning through all the processes of assessing our spacecraft, uh, Calypso, and um, it was uh, trying at times. It was, uh, there were some tough times. But the pair have also managed to make the long trip fun. I love being up here in space. Every day you, you do something that's work, quote unquote, you can do it upside down, you can do it sideways. <laughs> so it adds a little different perspective. I miss my two dogs, I miss my friends. But you know what, like Butch said, there are so many people uh, on Earth that are sending us messages and it, it makes you feel just right at home. A destination and mission <music> that is yet to be completed. Daniel Duty for 10 News First. Time for sport now. We've got McKinnon and uh, any regrets from James Sisley after last night's moment with Ken Hinckley? No regrets whatsoever. He says he'll always stick up for his teammates, Barthy, while Hinckley has been given a please explain from the AFL. Hinckley, he couldn't help himself post-match, sending a spray Jack Ginnivan's way. All the fallout from the incident and the heart-stopping contest next. Also tonight, another Nathan Cleary masterclass on his return from injury as the Panthers close in on a fifth straight grand final. And touchdown for the Wanderers as one of the A-League's greatest imports, Juan Mata, arrives in Parramatta. The Spaniards' big plans for the season ahead. What riches did you bring? The most exotic spice of all... Chicken salt. Wednesday's gonna be a laugh riot as Tommy Little, Zoe Coombs Ma, Emma Holland, and Marty Sheargold go through the blue door. And thank God you're here. When things collide, they make noise. Real noise. Noise loud enough to turn Tuesday into Taco Tuesday. El Paso. Make some noise. Go get him! <laughs> what are you doing? Reserving an Uber ride for 30 minutes from now. Why? Four more two oh, diamond winners in the box to box for the target man, Billy! Reserve on Uber. How was your promotion thing? I don't know. Well, I'm so proud of you, Dad. I got you something in the glove box. And before you ask, they didn't have fruit and nut. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Ozcar spring clearance sale is on. Over 3,000 quality used cars to choose from. Some up to 40% off. And all cars come with a five-year warranty and five-year roadside assistance. Don't miss Ozcar spring clearance sale up to 40% off. In the land of ice and snow, Arendelle will let it go. Get a bonus Disney Worlds of Wonder collector card pack at Woolworths when you purchase participating products from Dove or Omo in a $30 shop. Start collecting today. Out the front, sweetie. Don't be too long. Kiss. Yui's 24-7 roadside assist is a must-have with this late-night teenage taxi service I've recently started. Oh. <laughs> Insurance that's a bit more U shaped. Yui, you insured. Get more zeros in your life. Win tomorrow's USA Power Lotto. Worth over $200 million. Yep, $200 million. Draw closes 10 a.m. tomorrow. Play now at lotteryoffice.com.au. Aussie-owned, Aussie-operated. Versace Eros Energy, the new fragrance for men. My, my store. How do you make a fried chicken burger that's perfect for delivery? Put it on a pizza. Introducing Domino's new fried chicken burger. Featuring 100% chicken breast with crispy southern coating. Try the pizza or get the box from just 12 bucks. Master Chefs taking over Deal's primetime celebrity special. Yeah, yeah. 
7.30 Tuesday on 10 and 10 play. Port Adelaide has set up a prelim final clash with the Swans after downing the Hawks in a brutal three-point thriller. While the match was a classic, the action has been overshadowed by an after-the-siren spray from Ken Hinckley, with the AFL issuing a please explain. A team under pressure and a coach under fire. Port Adelaide's season lives on. Port The win was brave, but the aftermath was bordering on ugly. Ken Hinckley boiling over post-game, spraying Jack Ginnivan after the young hawk stirred the pot on social media during the week. As a coach, that's pretty disappointing. You'd think, I reckon Ken, as a coach, you'd sit back and go, we've just had a win, a great win. You should be talking about how well our team played. Instead, a coach is there mouthing off to a losing side. I probably should start and say that there was, there was an incident after the game where I had some words... Um, with, with a Hawthorne player that I, that I wish I hadn't had. We had a very young player who was have, having had some very aggressive words said to him by a much older man who's been in the game for a long time. It's not the first time that Ken's done that, won't be the last, but it's an emotional game and sometimes it gets the better of us. The match was an all-time cracker and it was on from the start. Physical game turns in a more physical. Willie Rioli provided the magic in the first half. Giorgiardi's off hand, Rioli goal! With a second on the clock, Rioli's goal! Before the Wizard fired up in the third. Watson for two in a minute has nailed it! The Hawks never stopped trying, but the power's spark couldn't be denied in the three-point win. Horn Francis! Three! So as we move on from all the post-game argy-bargy, Port Adelaide now have a prelim final to plan for. Todd Marshall won't be there due to concussion protocols, but the Power's recent record against the Swans is very sound. This club's known for its fight and willingness to, to keep having a crack. Nick Butler for 10 News First. The Panthers have done it again. After a near-perfect first half and a Nathan Cleary masterclass, Penrith is now just one win away from a fifth straight grand final. The Roosters left shell-shocked, but still with belief they can compete with the teams that are the best in this competition. Death, taxes and Penrith beating the Roosters. All guarantees in life after the Panthers claimed a tenth straight win over the Tricolours. Cleary... I guess experience gives you something and we understand how to play finals and I think our, you know, our style is you know, suited to it. We've seen this script before. It was clearly the Cleary show. Nathan returning from injury and didn't put a foot wrong. Cleary chasing and brings him down. I thought he was all right. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Nah. <laughs> nah, I thought he was, yeah, he was outstanding. It's just fun. It just feels like we're kids again, but on the biggest stage. And it's um, stuff that we talked about as kids and we've dreamt for this to happen. Down 24-0 at half-time, the Roosters refused to give in. Two quick tries after the break set the stage for a thriller, but it wasn't to be. Confidence taking a hit, but the season is still alive. You know, we put it all together. Pretty hard to beat, but it's just we haven't... We haven't probably had any performance all year. Two Queenslanders at opposite ends of their career clash tomorrow. Bulldog Toby Sexton is in awe of Manly's daily Cherry Evans before a do-or-die fixture. He's renowned for big games and he's done it in Origin and Manly as well. And, yeah, it's going to be a cool challenge this weekend. For many in both teams, it's a first finals appearance. Lehigh Hopawate is still pinching himself, hoping to impress his famous father, John, a Seagulls cult figure. Yeah, my old man doesn't stop um, telling me what to do, so I'm just trying to have a good game so he can tell me, stop telling me what to do. Trent Simpson for 10 News First. The worst possible... Wanderers coach Alan Stadjic believes Juan Mata is a legacy signing that will transform the, from the careers of young players at the club. The World Cup, Champions League and Premier League winner thrilled with the reception he received this morning. Welcome Juan. By 6am Sydney International Airport was a Mata madhouse. It feels amazing to get in a plane and to travel for 14 hours and come into a place and then having fans there. Wanderers' songs, but 
the love is widespread. Plenty clutching Manchester United and Chelsea kit, two of the clubs where he solidified a reputation as champion player and person. Quality human being with a fantastic character who is the most decorated footballer that's ever played in this country. I'm very lucky to have the career that I had, but I am still hungry for more. It's a legacy signing, according to Alan Stachic, who hopes the Spanish World Cup winner's humility and professionalism rubs off on his young squad. I think we're too spoiled as a society and as a group of footballers as well, and I think that that can cause a lot of other issues um, in terms of resilience. And to have his football insight, his experience is, is something that you, you just don't get that easy. You know? um, I want to bring high standards, uh, professionalism and all my experience and, and knowledge in the game and of course I want to bring good football. Mata played one game only in a season at Vissel Kobe in Japan and who's recently been training in Denmark to stay sharp. So I feel good, I feel ready to to come back, I'm really eager to be on the pitch. I was telling the coach I'm really looking forward to, to touch the ball again, to train with, with my new teammates. This, his new theatre of dreams, Mata said he was trying to picture it filled to the brim for the Sydney derby. I think it's going to be a great uh, football night for, for all of us and, of course, hopefully a happier night for Western Sydney. Ben Hamilly for 10 News First. It took just 127 seconds for the Bulls to charge into the lead against Oakley in the Australia Cup quarterfinal. Valère Germain, one on one. Two minutes on the clock and MacArthur FC take the lead. Weather wreaked havoc in the middle of the match. The Cannons failing to fire as Philip Curto made a brilliant save to keep them at bay. MacArthur will face South Melbourne in the semis. Ferrari Charles Leclerc was up and down like a roller coaster during practice for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Crashed in practice one and almost did it again in the same spot in P2. Yeah, guys, I'm, I'm not driving with this car. It's impossible, you cannot see that on data. Impossible. But the man from Monaco didn't let it rattle him at all and went on to clock the fastest time of the day. Aussie Oscar Piastri was fifth fastest, but Daniel Ricciardo down in 16th. England has levelled the T20 series against Australia after winning Game 2 in Cardiff. Jake Fraser McGurk was on fire for the Aussies, smacking 50 off just 31 balls, but Liam Livingston went bigger for England with 87 off 47 to guide his nation to victory. Sounded good. It is another maximum for Livingston. Matt Short led the fight with the ball in hand, taking five for 26, England winning by three wickets. And yes, they won the match, but it wasn't on the back of Jamie Overton's catching. He let Cam Green off the hook, hook dropping a sitter. The next ball, he was taught a lesson by one of his own fans. Where the gentleman shows Jamie Overton just how it's done. And good catch. And whoops. Actually, that's the second one of those we've seen in two games. Not often we give an Englishman our play of the day, but this fan's over-the-barrier beauty is more than worthy. Subtle celebration too, but wouldn't you, if you were there in front of that crowd, just <laughs> woo, whoop it up. Great. Right. Nice give him the team, put him on the field. <laughs> yeah, get him out there. Well, they won anyway, so... <laughs> See you a bit later. OK, bye. Coming up next, more on this Saturday's top stories, and Taylor Ryan has all the weather details. Go wild for Mad Monday. At 7.30, the race is let loose in Africa. Then, Robert Irwin will have a wild time as guest host of Have You Been Paying Attention? It's a wild Monday on 10 and 10 Play. Your cat's immune system is one of her natural protective systems. Help strengthen it with Purina One with Immune Defence Plus, a specialty blend that helps support her immune health to help her lead a healthy life. Purina One with Immune Defence Plus. If you can't live without Netflix... Can't live without Netflix. Then you can't live without the AGL Netflix electricity plan. With Netflix included for the life of your plan. AGL do that. Join AGL's Netflix electricity plan today. But what's the best value? Oh, excuse me. What about this? The Woolies app. You just press the best unit price button and... Oh, there you go. All sorted, showing the lowest unit price first. Impressive. Saw it on my socials. <laughs> Easily compare unit prices in the Woolworths app.
That's today's Fresh Food People. Wayne here features actual intelligence, complete with the world's most powerful internal computer. And he shares his bets on Sportsbet's new feed, so you can copy real bets from real people with Sportsbet. You win some, you lose more. Bang, bang on my drum, my tribe's everywhere. Call us what you want, we don't care. You know I love you, Jarvis, but there's just no way you'd be able to get dinner on the table in under 20 minutes like this. Planning even just a few dinners a week with HelloFresh can help in a lot of little ways. HelloFresh, Hello Dinner. Get behind the wheel with MG's 10-year warranty. It's now on every MG in the range. And that goes for the ZST, now from just $25,990 drive away. Drop into your local MG dealer today. Bring a smile to school lunch boxes this spring with great fresh specials. Like Australian strawberries 250 grams, bursting with flavour, and now just $1.90 a punnet. That's today's fresh food people. With HCF Life Protect Insurance, members get up to $1.5 million cover to help protect their loved ones. And now Kurt gets the rest of this ad to help out some loved ones. I'm an underwater metal detectorist and I recently found this wedding ring at the bottom of Empress Falls. And it has an engraving. So if your initials are S and K and you were married in December of 2017, get in touch. I'd love to get it back to you. Oh, how nice are you? Um, if it's not claimed, it's my size. I'm just saying. The NBL is back on 10. Here we go. Don't miss the Sydney Kings as they take on the Adelaide 36ers. Bang! bang. Let's go. Sunday Hoops, live September 22 on 10 and 10 play. Hello again. I hope you're having a great evening. Let's take a more detailed look at your weather forecast now. And on the satellite, you can see we do have some scattered clouds stretching across Tasmania, Victoria and parts of southeastern South Australia. That's also with some onshore winds pushing low-level cloud along parts of the Queensland and New South Wales coast. Now, as you can see, this blue section here on the synoptic map over the southeast is where things are getting a little bit chilly. We have a cold front and that is bringing showers across Victoria, Tasmania and parts of South Australia and even southern New South Wales. So much so, we're likely to see some snow on the Tasmanian Highlands and Victorian Alps tomorrow. There's also a high sitting off the bite and that's actually directing some cold and gusty southerly winds over the south and southeast, uh, which is causing some isolated showers along parts of the east coast that you can see here. And that is expected to continue tomorrow. But let's take a closer look at the forecast across the rest of the country for your weekend. In Queensland tomorrow, as mentioned, some isolated showers are expected along the southeast coast, but also further north up in Cairns. It should be mostly sunny elsewhere, though, with temperatures hitting 31 in Longreach, 27 in Rockhampton and 24 down on the Sunshine Coast. Looking at the southeast of the state now, where we are expecting some showers on the Gold Coast, but it should be a mostly sunny day elsewhere, including in Brisbane. We're expecting a top of 25 degrees. There is just the slight chance of a shower from later in the afternoon, though. Now, over in New South Wales tomorrow, you can expect some isolated showers along the coast with some fresh and gusty winds and possibly even, again, some snow on the southern ranges above 600 metres or so. To the southeast, there's the chance of a thunderstorm and some hail, but we should see some sunnier conditions expected through the central west, reaching a top of 17 degrees in Dubbo and 14 in the nation's capital. That's after a very chilly overnight low of just zero degrees. And looking around Sydney tomorrow, this is important for those running the Sydney Marathon. And the good news is it won't be too hot, reaching a top of just 17 degrees in the city. But perhaps the less than ideal news is, is that there is a high chance of showers with some south to southwesterly winds reaching up to 45 kilometres an hour. So best of luck to everyone running, but I will not be joining you on the course. Further south in Victoria is where things will feel particularly frosty tomorrow. Expect overnight temperatures to drop as low as one degree in Ballarat, two degrees in Bendigo, when it is looking like a partly cloudy day for the rest of the state. There is some uh, the chance of some light isolated showers through the south. Now, looking around Melbourne tomorrow, 
tomorrow. Again, it should be a partly cloudy day across the city, reaching 13 degrees in the CBD. The same down in Geelong and at Mornington. Taking a quick look at Tassie now, you can expect some showers about the west and the far south. There is the chance of snow falling to around 700 metres in the southwest, reaching 12 degrees in Hobart. And in South Australia tomorrow, you can expect a mostly dry and sunny day, but still with some below average temperatures across the board, reaching 17 degrees in the city, with some cooler conditions in the Adelaide Hills, 13 at Mount Barker. So if you've got some uh, firewood left over in a fireplace, I would suggest chucking that on tomorrow. I'll be back with a look at the week ahead a little later. See you soon. Making news this Saturday, a mother has faced court accused of murdering her two young sons in their Blue Mountains home. Businesses count the cost of protests in Melbourne as the government says it would like to host the event that caused them again. And after late nights and early mornings cheering them on the TV, Aussie crowds have thanked our heroes from Paris in person in Brisbane and in Melbourne. A 42-year-old woman has been charged with the murders of her two young sons, aged 9 and 11, who were found dead in their Blue Mountains home on Tuesday by their father. The accused mother appeared in court this morning and didn't make an application for bail. There was little Russell and Benjamin Smith loved more than watching their Penrith Panthers play. Rest in peace, beautiful boys. We love you and loved the incredible spirit brought to each game that will live in our hearts forever, their family wrote. Days after the brothers were allegedly murdered by their mother, 42-year-old Trish Smith faced court for the first time. There's a lot of family members who are really hurting in respect to this, parents, grandparents and the like. The bodies of 11-year-old Russell and 9-year-old Benjamin were found by their father on Tuesday. But court documents have revealed police believe the boys may have died up to 17 hours earlier. Smith has been charged with killing her sons sometime between 7.30pm on Monday night and 12.30pm the next day, before allegedly attempting to take her own life. Now out of hospital and in custody, the magistrate today asked whether she understood what was happening. Yes, Smith responded. At this stage, I can't say anything more in relation to um, what's going to happen with the matter uh, until we get all the material. Today is just the start of what will likely be a lengthy legal process. Smith won't be back in court now until November as investigators continue to try and piece together the final moments leading up to the little boy's deaths. Child death investigations are always very complex and they're also high profile and very sensitive in nature. So the police will have to tread very carefully in how they treat this situation. Samara Gardner for 10 News First. The violent protests that ground Melbourne city streets to a halt for days during the Land Forces Weapons Expo could be set to return. The government will bid to host the event again, even though nearby small businesses say the hit to their revenue was huge. Day after day, protesters turned up. You are an absolute murderer! Clashing with police in ugly displays outside Melbourne's Convention and Exhibition Centre. 24 officers were injured, pelted with rocks, bottles and horse manure. Officers fought back against the anti-war protesters, deploying capsicum spray, flash distraction devices and non-lethal munitions. The cost of Victoria Police's largest operation in decades blown out to $30 million. But the biannual event could soon be welcomed back to Victoria. The government estimates the Weapons Expo brought in $70 million into the local economy, but small businesses say they were hit hard during the three days of action. You hear on the news uh, pepper spray and rubber bullets being used. A lot of people are afraid of their safety. They just don't want to be in the area at all. So they don't come in, they don't even if they're local, they don't come out of their, their houses. Some business owners at the popular South Melbourne markets say foot traffic was down by around 70%, questioning the choice to hold it in the city centre. Oh, that's what you should do, anime expo, movie expos, not weaponry expos, you know, like do it somewhere else. The disruptions hurting particularly hard during the cost of living crisis. Hopefully we'll make up for it next week, but who knows. <laughs> Caitlin Dugan for 10 News First. 
Pop star Justin Timberlake has issued a grovelling apology after pleading guilty to drink driving. The 43-year-old admitted he made a huge mistake and could have made a different decision. Mobbed by media and members of the public, this is the norm for singer-songwriter Justin Timberlake. But the 43-year-old pop star has been in the spotlight for the wrong reasons after pleading guilty to impaired driving. I try to hold myself to a very high standard for myself and this was not, not that. Arrested in New York's Hamptons in June, Timberlake was originally charged with drink driving but denied the accusation. Police claiming he ran a stop sign, veered out of his lane and exited his BMW smelling of alcohol before refusing to take a breath test. Even if you've had one drink, don't get behind the wheel of a car. There's... So many alternatives. Escaping a criminal conviction, the star's charge was downgraded to a traffic violation. See, the evidence revealed that my client finished the contents of one drink in two hours at the American Hotel. This public safety presser outside the Sag Harbour Police Department, a requirement in his plea deal. But I'm hoping that whoever's watching and listening right now can learn from this mistake. I know that I certainly have. Timberlake, who's currently on tour, will now say bye-bye-bye to his driver's licence for three months. The singer with a net worth of more than $200 million will also have to pay a $500 fine and serve 25 hours of community service. Brianna Boylan for 10 News First. A 19 and 20 year old have been arrested following a fire at a Donvale school. Police allege the two young men set fire to a shed on school property and vandalised two parked cars. They were arrested at the scene and released pending summons. It's been a tough run for the Heatherwood Special School. It was severely damaged in a blaze believed deliberately lit this time last year. US President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer have emerged from talks saying Putin will not prevail. The war in Ukraine was top of the agenda, but there's been no easing of weapons restrictions for Kyiv, despite increasingly desperate pleas from Volodymyr Zelensky. A recently elected Prime Minister and an outgoing President united against a shared threat. What do you think of Vladimir Putin's threat of war, Mr President? I don't think much about that. Ukraine's push to ease restrictions on weapons supplied by the UK and US was a key part of discussions. Kyiv wants to strike deep into Russian territory using British-made Storm Shadow missiles, which have American parts. There are some signs the White House is willing to change its policy. But not yet. We've come to a strong position. I'm very pleased that we have this discussion. Yeah. Vladimir Putin is already sabre rattling, warning against the move with Russia's ambassador to the UN telling the Security Council if the decision to lift restrictions is really taken or will be taken, NATO countries are starting direct war with Russia. It is a delicate balancing act for allies, but Ukraine insists it cannot wait any longer. The country is reeling from a string of deadly strikes while it tries to maintain a daring ground offensive on Russian soil. Putin and his accomplices must feel all the problems that war brings, Zelensky says. The war must become harder for Russia. While Keir Starmer was in Washington, one of his predecessors was in Kyiv. Boris Johnson was there to show his support and reinforce the message, Ukraine will not fight this war alone. John Paul Gonzo for 10 News First. Australia's Olympic and Paralympic champions have been welcomed home at a parade in Brisbane. Thousands cheered on the athletes who were also awarded the keys to the city that will be hosting its own Olympic Games in eight years' time. From Paris to Brisbane. Australia's Olympic and Paralympic champions paraded. Thank you, guys. Thanks Thank for coming so out, guys.
at a special homecoming. It was kind of crazy seeing people that are like famous just like walk about in normal so everyday life like among goal, normal was. people. Capping off Australia's best performance at any Olympic Games. I mean, look at this turnout. I mean, I love Brisbane. This is always what we do. We love supporting our local sports stars. Their well-earned medals for all to see and hold. It was very heavy. It feels very cool. Today's homecoming really signals the end of Paris 2024, with the attention now turning to Los Angeles, but more importantly, Brisbane 2032, with these athletes today hopefully inspiring the next generation of those bronze, silver and gold medalists. And to see so many kids there was just fantastic. It was awesome. I mean, I got this. I've, I've taught this girl three years in a row will be this year, and I just saw her in the crowd, and she's given me this a photo of it every year prior to, and I just love this stuff. This is what motivates me to keep on going. I'm probably going to do break in for soccer. I would do fencing. Cricket. Cricket. Um, maybe 100 free stuff. But for now, a chance to let their hair down and celebrate. Oh, I've loved being home. I actually haven't been in my own bed too much. I've been here, there and everywhere. It's, you know, cool to look at my medals when I need to get them out for things, but I um, have been trying to disconnect as much as I can and just relax a little bit. Thanks so much for coming out. What a wonderful day in Brisbane. Thank you. Matthew Carstunen for 10 News First. Coming up next, Scotty's back with more of the day's sports news, including a nightmare start. And the Breakers import facing a big ban for a headbutt during a pre-season game against Sydney. Our celebrities are on the trip of a lifetime. Yeah, it looks like it's from another world. Oh, this is magical. Seven o'clock Sunday, there's mud, sweat and tears. Maybe you keep your mouth shut. We're not on that. Yeah, you ain't swimming right now either. And the drama <laughs> doesn't stop there. Never actually met a llama that I've liked. Llamas suck. <clears throat> oh, of course it's going to happen. We get the one broken llama. Celebrity Amazing Race, 7 o'clock Sunday on 10 and 10 Play. Freedom doesn't wait. Lieb, the original Eau de Parfum and Flowers and Flames. The new floral fragrance, Yves Saint Laurent. Repco is bringing the Bathurst. With 50% off Castrol Edge 5W30, 5 litre, just 42 bucks. And let's get you going with 25% off Maguire's car care. Catalogue out now. Repco, bring in the Bathurst. You've got your phone. Barocca Mind is scientifically formulated with Spanish sage for enhanced memory and mental recall in one hour. You got this. In time for your present. New Barocca Mind. Master your mind. Think of everything you could do with NIB. You could use NIB Rewards to get a discount on some new sneakers. You could get into running. With the time you save with telehealth and prescription delivery, you could really get into running. You could find the perfect physio and really, really get into running. You could even get discounted travel insurance. Let's just start with the sneakers. NIB, potentially amazing. <coughs> Rough cold bro, try to fix vapor drops extra strong. <coughs> Up to three times more menthol. Clear the nails, and the ground. How's the nose and throat? Fix vapor drops extra strong. Q4 e-tron. That's progress you can feel. Zero. Beautiful business. Exceedingly good cakes. Good things come in threes, but be quick. The Royal Melbourne Hospital Home Lottery bonus deadline is next Friday. Plus, your tickets stay in for the $5.8 million grand prize. Enter now and support the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Excuse me, can we put the fight on? What are you doing? Reserving an Uber ride for 45 minutes from now. Why? Oh! Up against the cage! That is wrong! 
Reserve on Uber. Pick up a better brekkie at Hungry Jack's drive-thru. Forget muffins. Try our new freshly toasted Turkish buns with crispy bacon or flame-grilled sausage, cheese and barbecue sauce. And our award-winning, rich, velvety barista coffee. Brekkie's better at Hungry Jack's. Monday's going to be wild as special guest host Robert Irwin joins Ashla, Lloyd, Alex, Ed and Sam on Have You Been Paying Attention? Time for more sport now with Scott McKinnon and Scotty, a first for Harry Grant this afternoon's final against Melbourne. Yep, a triple treat for him against the Sharkies it was. Grant bagged his first ever NRL hat-trick as the Storm flexed their premiership muscle in a dominant win over those Sharkies. They powered home 37-10 to 10 as Cronulla's dismal finals record continued. Saving their worst first minute for their most important game of the season. Salute Cameron Munster! From a penalty... Munster was taken out in support. Pappenhausen is his solicitor. Sean Bloor needed one too after this. A Siffa Telekai special. But Braden Trindle gave us his best Benji Marshall impression. Flick pass is sensational. A possible grand final come early in the NRLW with the Broncos beating the Sharks 20 to 16 to overtake them as ladder leaders. Brisbane scoring in the dying seconds to snatch the win. She's got there. Chelsea, with the last play of the match, has won it for the Broncos. It's not all good news for the winners, losing two-time Rugby Sevens gold medalist Stacey Waka to a calf injury. Hawks captain James Sicily is standing by his response to last night's confrontation with Ken Hinckley as the AFL issued a please explain to the power coach the heated post-match exchange souring a win that sends Port to the prelim. Nick Butler has more. Yes, good evening from Adelaide Oval, where it's fair to say all the emotions of footy were on show here last night. Let's start with the positives. What a win it was by Port Adelaide. They dug in for their coach, showed all their guts and determination and got over the line by three points in an absolute cracker. Port Adelaide are through to a prelim final. Up off the canvas. Both clubs should be proud of the way that game was played. It was a really tough game of footy and... Um, you know, uh, you've got to just keep going right to the very end, and that was what it was like. You had to get right to that last moment, and you have to be desperate right to the last moment. Now, the action really happened after the final siren, and things got a little bit heated and a little bit nasty. Ken Hinckley uh, pinpointing Jack Ginevan of the Hawks and giving him a fearful spray. Now, uh, in the aftermath, well, it's still bubbling along a little bit. Ken Hinckley certainly is sorry, but the Hawks are still uh, pretty unhappy about it. It's not the first time that Ken's done that. won't be the last but it's an emotional game and sometimes it gets the better of us. Now, as for Jack Ginevan, he does have a habit of stirring the pot, but the Hawks' captain, James Sisley, says he's learned a tough lesson and, in hindsight, might have left Port Adelaide out of his Instagram for the week. Jack openly admitted to us during, during the week in the leaders that he really wish he didn't do it. Um, it's all part of the learning. So there we go, argy-bargy aside, Port Adelaide and Kenny Hinckley live on for another week and they've booked a date with the Swans next Friday night. It must be said they've got a very good record against the Swans. Beat them by 112 points just five weeks ago. Todd Marshall won't be there, though. The key forward has been ruled out due to concussion protocols. Thank you, Butts. Now, Swans fans, look away. Richmond dismantling Sydney in the AFLW, getting out to a big lead early, up by five goals at quarter time. Matty Shevlin belting home a big goal to put the Swans to Shevlin's a thumping kick, bounces through for a superb goal. Matty Shevlin, outstanding. Richmond home by 46 elsewhere. Carlton took care of Geelong in a low-scoring affair. Juan Mata says his reception at Sydney Airport is proof. Wanderers fans are the most passionate in Australia. The player with the best CV in A-League's history says he's ready to go after almost a year without football. Welcome Juan. By 6am Sydney International Airport was a Mata madhouse. It feels amazing to get in a plane and to travel for 14 hours and come into a place and then having fans there. Wanderers songs... <laughs> But the love is widespread, plenty clutching Manchester United and Chelsea kit, two of the clubs where he solidified a reputation as champion player and person. Quality human being with a fantastic character, 
who is the most decorated footballer that's ever played in this country. I'm very lucky to have the career that I had, but I am still hungry for more. It's a legacy signing, according to Alan Stacic, who hopes the Spanish World Cup winner's humility and professionalism rubs off on his young squad. I think we're too spoiled as a society and as a group of footballers as well. And I think that that can cause a lot of other issues um, in terms of resilience. And to have his football insight, his experiences, is something that you, you just don't get that easy. You know, I want to bring high standards, uh, professionalism and all my experience and, and knowledge in the game. And of course, I want to bring good football. Mata played one game only in a season at Vissel Kobe in Japan and has recently been training in Denmark to stay sharp. And I feel good. I feel ready to to come back. I'm really eager to be on the pitch. I was telling the coach I'm really looking forward to, to touch the ball again, to train with, with my new teammates. This, his new theatre of dreams, Mata said he was trying to picture it filled to the brim for the Sydney derby. I think it's going to be a great uh, football night for, for all of us and of course hopefully a happier night for Western Sydney. Benz Hamily for 10 News First. New Zealand breaker Freddie Gillespie has been suspended following an ugly incident in last night's pre-season game against Sydney that saw him ejected from the stadium. The big man headbutting Kings veteran Sean Bruce with just moments remaining in the final quarter. And tensions just starting to boil over. The intent didn't look good. And there's a bit of blood there, isn't it? We do not like to see that. Gillespie given a disqualifying foul and faces a two-match suspension. Sydney winning 90 points to 79. This afternoon it was Brisbane over Cairns in the last game of the competition. Round one of the season proper gets underway with a grand final rematch in Perth on Thursday to mark the start of Hoops Fest. Despite our top order firing, Australia has lost the second T20 against England. Jake Fraser-McGurk set the tone early, smashing a half century off 31 balls to see the Aussies finish with 193. Liam Livingston with a swift response to guide England to victory. Sounded good. It is another maximum for Livingston. Matt Short, the best of our bowlers with a five-wicket haul, meaning little, though, as England squared the series. And Sandown threw everything at the drivers, including some hail on qualifying day for the year's first enduro. Aaron Love didn't like it one bit. Zero grip, and then it's back the left-hand side of the car, the wall down there and giving it a fair tear-up. Yep, the 22-year-old was left shattered. In the top 10 shootout, Ryan Wood went on a wild ride to the frustration of his team. Will Brown set the best time. The series leader clinching pole position for just the second time this season. Rain, hail and shine. I've heard even some snow in Victoria today. Crazy conditions. 161 laps around that joint tomorrow. Anything could happen, Barthy. We'll Wait, see. see if they get some snow. <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Slipping and buddy. sliding. Coming up next, speaking of the weather, Taylor's back with the forecast. In this house, anything can happen. I am the Taskmaster. Tom Gleason is back. OMG, yay! Are these five new comedians up to the task? Here we go. Oh my gosh. I think I'm just going to call them the Muppets. What have you been up to? Just hanging out with my balls. <laughs> new Taskmaster is coming to Tuesdays on Ten and Ten Play. How was your promotion thing? I don't know. Well, I'm so proud of you, Dad. I got you something in the glove box. And before you ask, they didn't have fruit and nut. There's a glass and a half in everyone. The Good Guys Doorbuster deals are on now. Get $204 off this Fisher & Paykel washer, $500 off this Samsung 75-inch TV, 15% off Lenovo computers, plus this Shark cordless back only $279. Doorbuster deals only at The Good Guys. As we age, the important question is not how old you are, it's how healthy you are. That's why I recommend Nature's Way Lifespan, based on the science of healthy ageing. There's one to help protect our brains as we age. Multis for men to support healthy ageing, and multis for women to help fight the signs of ageing. Nature's Way Lifespan. Living way better. Nature's Way.
Drive in for spring savings at Autobahn. Get 20% off Century High Performance Batteries. And join our free Accelerate Rewards program to get this new Lawn X Pro Oil half price, just $26.99. Autobahn. Low prices. Take your hair care naturally from zero to 100. Try Herbal Essences with zero paraffins, parabens and colorants and 100% certified argan oil for naturally nourished hair. Bang, bang on my drum, my tribe's everywhere. Call us what you want, we don't care. Inside some supermarket aisle wholemeal, you can find over 20 ingredients. A rather complex process for bread. Baker's Delight High Fibre Low GI Wholemeal. Fewer ingredients, double the fibre. When the lucky country isn't so lucky, it's lucky you're with Amy. Lucky you're with Amy. Big Four say they'll be there for life's big moments. But when it comes to getting the support you need, when buying a home, shouldn't you go bigger? With Australia's most satisfied home loan customers, join the bank that's bigger. The you. Bendigo Bank. The better big bank. This abduction on our soil is big enough to do global damage. Let's just have a conversation. New FBI, Sunday on 10 and 10 Play. Hello again. Let's take a final look at your weather now and how next week is shaping up across the capitals. On the satellite, you can see we have some scattered clouds stretching across Tasmania, Victoria and parts of southeastern South Australia. And that's associated with a cold front. It is bringing some showers and much cooler temperatures than average for this time of year. It could even result in some snow across parts of New South Wales and Victoria tomorrow. It's also been triggering some isolated showers along parts of the east coast, which will persist into tomorrow. But looking at Brisbane across the next week, a mostly sunny day on the cards tomorrow, with those conditions continuing over Monday and Tuesday. A partly cloudy day on Wednesday and 25 before a sunny day on Thursday and a very warm weekend in store indeed. Now, looking at Sydney this week, you can expect a shower or two and a windy day on the cards for our Sydney Marathon runners tomorrow. But at least you'll have a great recovery day on Monday with a sunny top of 19. And it should be a pretty sunny week for the next few days, reaching 21 degrees on Tuesday. Things are warming up and reaching 27 by Thursday and then cooling off just slightly in time for the weekend. In Melbourne this coming week, a very chilly start coming your way, a top of just 13 degrees tomorrow with a shower or two on Monday. And those conditions will persist through most of the week, but Thursday is looking particularly soggy. Down in Hobart, a wet week is coming your way. Wednesday looks to be the day that is going to bring the most in terms of rainfall, with up to 10 millimetres expected. And in Adelaide this week, a bit of a mixed bag for you. Sunny tomorrow and 17 should stay that way across Monday and Tuesday. But there is a shower or two developing on Thursday, reaching 17. And those showers should stick around into the weekend. But that's all from me, Chris. Good luck to everyone doing the Sydney Marathon tomorrow. I will not be out there with them. It's a shame. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor is a very good runner. That's 10 News First this Saturday. I'm Chris Barth. Thanks for your company. See you the same time tomorrow. Have a great night. In a quiet corner of the English countryside, there's a place for those looking for love. Here, a dedicated team match abandoned dogs.